We have a quorum present. Next item. B, Chairwoman's remarks. I have none. C, a pool of the minutes from the July 2nd, 2020 meeting. So move. Uh, it's been moved by, that was uh, Commissioner Baydoon. Do we have a support? I had this. Supported by Commissioner Haddis. Any um, objections? Okay, and next item. I'm sorry, was that the uh, vote? You I'm sorry, yes. Roll, we were under the approval of the minutes. All in favor. All in favor. All right. I'm sorry, I didn't do that. All right. Any opposed? No one opposed. The motion passed. Next item. Item D1, under new business, a discussion on funding and services available to assist veterans during COVID-19, including Robert Price, Michigan Veterans Affairs Association, Thomas Armstrong, Michigan Veterans Foundation, and Casey Besserai, Wayne County Division of Veterans Affairs. All right, we will um, start with uh, Mr. Price from the Michigan Veteran Affairs Department, Association, rather. Um, I'm having some problems here, ma'am. I have a, uh, a short list of items I wanted to talk with you. I have some very specific notes to try to keep it concise and short. I am on your screen and I can't get back to my screen to pull that up. So I can make a, uh, you could give me a couple of minutes, maybe pass on, move on to somebody else. I'll see if I can't send that to me in a different venue. Yes, we will do that. Then. We'll, we'll move on to Thank you. Mr. Uh, Castillo. from the Michigan Veteran Foundation. Am I on Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go okay. right ahead. Mm -hmm. Here at the Michigan Veterans Foundation, we continue to uh, provide service to homeless veterans in, in Michigan, specifically in the Detroit area. Most of our clients come from the Detroit area. Since the shutdown or the the COVID-19, we're on a partial shutdown, meaning that we don't have visitors who don't belong to the center or, you know, not customers or, or um, that belong in the center at this time during this transition period are not allowed in. And uh, we continue to work with the VA closely and with the state agencies to test newcomers to come in to put in the 14-day quarantine until they uh, to make sure that they're, uh, they're healthy and then we can put them in the in the other rooms that, that are for the general population and we're working with we continue to work with the VA to transport our our clients to the VA hospital for treatment and to other areas where they need to go a lot of the agencies are shut down so most of this work administratively has to be done over the fax and phone and over the computer for like Social Security or IRS or state uh, state information like driver's license and stuff like that. Uh, we've been seeing an increase of clients in recent days. So it uh, seems like uh, we're, we're able to get the clients back from the hospitals and, and from other areas where they were infected and they were being hospitalized until they got well and then they returned back to our facility. And uh, they're given like a, uh, a form that says that they're negative now or they tested uh, negative before they are uh, put back in the area. If they tested positive, we can put them in a, in a separate area and keep them quarantined until they, they get, uh, we can get them medically cleared. Other than that, we, uh, we can still provide those services 365 days a year. 
24 hours a day. Um, does anybody have any questions? Yes. Um, so where where are you located? We're at 4626 Grand River Avenue. There might be about half a mile down from, I think it's Motor City Casino that's uh, up there on Grand River. I think that's the name of it. But uh, we're, uh, that's where we're located on the on Forest and Grand River area. And all of your services are free to veterans? Correct, ma'am. We also take walk-ins, but uh, right now we take walk-ins and the process that we, we either shuttle them over to the VRCC and to have them uh, processed or Sometimes they do, the VA does interviews over the phone, and so we can work on that. That way we can, we can take the clients in. Okay, and the uh, COVID testing uh, as well is, is free. You don't, they don't need any type of uh, insurance or any of that, is that correct? No, we coordinate that with the, with the city. And we take them down to the uh, Mill State Fair on Eight Mile, and that's been working very effectively. We have no problems in scheduling our clients, and we transport them down there, and, and then they get tested, and then we get the results. They get the results from uh, from the, the city. It's working very good. Oh, great, great. Uh, any commissioners uh, have any questions? All right, any other commissioners? <clears throat> if, if anybody tested positive, they would refer them right away to the veteran hospital or to their own doctor. Okay, if they test positive, we take them to a uh, VA hospital or to a private hospital. If they, it all depends upon whether they're, they're covered under the, uh, whether they have good paper. Uh, they have an honorable discharge, a general discharge. There are certain services that we have to provide under the uh, grant, but we make sure that they get to the hospital and they're taken care of. Like some of the clients that go to, to the private hospitals, we, we work closely with them to, to monitor their care. And then after they get well, they're, they're released back to the center. Thank you. And approximately... How many uh, veterans do you service um, yearly? Yeah, yearly. I'm, I'm not sure about that number. I can get you that from, from Mr. Armstrong, but we uh, we have a capacity of, of uh, housing 110 uh, clients and about maybe 25 in uh, vet rescue. A temporary, uh, it's a temporary shelter area that we have uh, so that we can get them in the in get them into the system to monitor. But I'll have Mr. Armstrong get you that information about the yearly total amount that, of uh, veterans that we service. Is that, is that sufficient? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. All right, did uh, any other commissioners have uh, any questions? Well, we want to thank you so much for uh, zooming into our meeting today and providing us with that valuable information. It's always good for the commissioners to know what resources that we have um, available for our veterans in our districts. So thank you so much for uh, attending our meeting. Okay, are they gonna put me on mute? Uh, she can put you on mute or, okay. yeah, okay. It, it's fine. You can you can stay in the meeting if you like, or you can- yes, I'd like that, I appreciate okay. that. Great, I can take Great. notes from the other organizations, what's going on. Okay. Mr. Thank Price, um, did you work out your technical issues? Yes, I did, ma'am. Great, great. Um, and again, this is Mr. Robert Price from the Michigan Veterans Affairs Association.
Thank you so much for attending our meeting today. You could go right ahead. All right, thank you very much for the invitation, ma'am. We're always looking for opportunities to share with our veterans population and our colleagues uh, who are involved in the civil division. That, uh, it's bewildering to us how so many people don't seem to know of us and what programs we have available. Uh, I'd start with the Michigan Veterans Trust Fund. The Michigan Veterans Trust Fund provides emergency grants to Michigan veterans and dependent family members to help them with short-term you know, financial crisis. You know, if you have that unforeseen emergent need, you know, your car breaks down, uh, your roof blows off, uh, there's a whole variety of um, reasons you could get a grant um, from the Michigan Veterans Trust Fund. Um, each county has a trust fund. Region, and, uh, these days they've been overwhelmed, so we've taken one of our agency uh, members to be the point of contact for uh, receiving trust fund grants. So if there's any veteran out there, I mean, it, it is limited to wartime veterans, though. You have to have an honorable discharge and you have to have 180 consecutive days of wartime service to be eligible for a grant. But you can go online to uh, mvaa.com or Michigan Veterans Affairs Agency.com and just follow the, the links there to trust fund applications. Or you can email our agent. Uh, if you want me to spell his name after I'm done pronouncing, I'll be more than glad to do so. His name is Eric Naparalski. And that is N A P. I E R A L S K I. Naparalski E at Michigan. So he'll take the application. What typically happens is we receive an application and it goes to a uh, committee. They review the application and make sure the eligibility criteria is met. And that is something that we can do monetarily. And then they'll reconnect with the veteran or family member. So you can directly to Eric. Uh, you can go on our website and find the application and apply it that way. Or you can call our resource call center at 800-642-4838. So in the past couple of years, the Michigan legislature very generous. Can you, I'm sorry, can you repeat the number, phone number, please? And yes. Sherelle, can you mute everyone else's an echo or it's hard to hear? him except Mr. Price. Okay. Thank you. Go right ahead, Mr. Price. Did you unmute Mr. Price? Um, yeah, I unmuted him. I won't know. Okay. Yeah. Go right ahead, Mr. Price. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. It's 800. 642-4838. And that is actually the number for our resource call center. Um, we have eight agents that are on call eight to five every single day. Um, and I'll talk more about the resource call center in a little bit, but I wanted to make sure I had a chance to talk about the County Veterans Service Fund grants. Um, that is something that's new. The Michigan legislature has provided an appropriation, uh, two million, $2.1 million annually to uh, aid veterans again. Who, um, so the grant dollars are intended to enhance and improve county operations and available benefit funding. Uh, and, uh, so that funding is, is dependent upon the legislature and they've been pretty generous you know, in the past few years. But, um, so a uh, county, uh, the amount of money that a county can get through the County Veterans Service Fund grant is wholly dependent upon their veterans population. So if your veterans population is, for example, 17% of the total veterans population, then you could expect to get 17% of the legislative appropriation for a County Veterans Service Fund grant. It has to be applied for. And I, again, you can call our resource call center I'm looking for the contact information for I must have dropped it. 
I, I'm, my apologies, I don't have the uh, email address where you can um, contact our agent. Um, and I can't get back to my screen because I'm on your screen. But if, again, if you call our resource call center, they can connect you to the County Veterans Service Fund grant agent, and that person will answer all the questions that a county may have and explain the application processes and what you can and can't do with the money. And there is a broad array of what you can do with that money. Be okay, and, and just to be clear, this is monies that uh, go directly to the counties. Is that yes. correct? Okay. So, and so the county would have to apply. The county has to apply. The county can also ask our agency, hey, can you be the beneficiary um, um, of the money for the county on behalf of the, of the county? Can we be your fiduciary would be a better way to say that. We are, I believe, the fiduciary for Wayne County. Um, maybe Mr. Betzer can uh, speak to that. Uh, I believe the agency is the fiduciary for that, for Wayne County, for the County Veterans Service Fund grant. And you are receiving, or veterans in the county are receiving, or a benefactor of the grants. Um, along with that grant, you know, one of the things we've done is partner with Myers, and Myers has um, donated food vouchers. So one of the things a veteran can do is apply for a grant for X sum of money and receive food vouchers. Um, in lieu of cash. But again, I know the program. I'm not the uh, all-knowing and all-wise to get down to the, you know, the devil's in the details sort of thing. So if you could call our our, our grant agent and uh, if anybody wants to send me an email after and ask for that information, I'll be more than glad to send it to you. Thank uh, you. Um, oh. Go right ahead. Mm -hmm. One more thing, we have uh, really in, um, invested in collaborations with community service providers. We started that venture, we knew that there were three, 4,000 organizations, entities, and even individuals across the state of Michigan who wanted to do something for veterans. And these are alternative services. I mean, once you've gone to the federal VA and you've got your VA benefits or you didn't get any, you still need some help with you know that your standard of living or quality of life. We have these alternative community services that a veteran can avail themselves to. Um, those are housed uh, in our veterans community action teams. There's one in each region. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone is familiar with the previous governor's administration regional uh, economic prosperity region concept where the state of Michigan is split up in 10 regions. Uh, so in each of those 10 regions, we have a community action team uh, they have unique alternative service. You know, it's not standard from region to region, but it could be something like um, Rob Price, I, I own a garage and I'll fix veterans cars for free every other Thursday um, from eight to 10, or we can come out and uh, put a new engine in your car or buy you a new car, or we can put a roof on your house. So it's all dependent on what alternative services each of those teams in the regions have. Um, so you, again, you can go on our website, and follow the uh, connections for Veterans Community Action Teams, or I can get you more specific contact information if you just want to shoot me an email. Uh, and I will give you my email uh, right now. It's uh, Price R5 at Michigan.gov. Uh, unfortunately, you have to spell out Michigan. The easiest way for a veteran to connect to a trust fund grant, a county veteran service fund grant, um, any of our alternative community service providers is to call our resource call center. They have uh, the, that contact information at their disposal and they can do the connection in a matter of seconds, if not minutes. And again, that number, 800-462-4838. Uh, run that website in concert with Michigan's 211. So we have a staff with eight representatives from eight in the morning till five in the evening. And Mr. Price, can yeah. you repeat the, the number? This is a different resource number, right? That uh, you just stated? It's the uh, one number really serves all. So if you wanted to get connected to a Veterans Trust Fund grant, 
um, call our resource call center. If you want to avail yourselves to a Colony Veteran Service Fund grant or be a grant recipient, call our resource call center. If you want to get connected to an alternative community service provider, call our resource call center. And they have those contacts at their fingertips, at their disposal, and can really make those connections in the most expeditious fashion. So now it sounds like the last number you gave was different from the first one. Um, can you? It wouldn't can be you, for me to make something, you know, an error or something like that, but I'm going to go to the numbers here. So it's 800-642-4838. Great. Thank you. I just wanted to confirm. Okay. I mean, so, I mean, those are the services that we have available for veterans. I mean, if you just need something, I mean, our resource call center is has a plethora of resources. Um, if you are a veteran, you're looking for documentation to... Uh, uh, validate your veteran status. You can call us and get that from us. Um, we have uh, a connection with the Defense Personnel Records Information Retrieval System. If you're a veteran and you're looking to get your military personnel file or something like that, uh, call us. <clears throat> we can usually get those in a matter of hours or certainly not more than a couple of days. And those are the most expeditious resources that we have available. You know, if you're a veteran and you've sort of hit a wall or something, and you need something, call our resource call center. Great, great uh, information. Um, is there a limit uh, to the services? You talked about helping with someone's roof or their car repair. Is there a limit to the services that are provided or can be provided to a individual veteran? There, I'm going to say that there is not a limit, um, but of course the higher the amount of money you're asking for, the more challenging it comes for us to transition those funds to a veteran. So the, the uh, Michigan Veterans Trust Fund, each county has a committee. The applications goes to committee members and they all say yay or nay. And then if there's a uh, um, more yeas than nays, it'll, it'll be approved. But again, um, it has to f meet those two eligibility criteria. It has to be an unforeseen. You didn't know this event was coming in your life. Um, and it has to be um, emergent. So hot water heater goes out, car breaks down, roof blows off. Um, again, there is no limit. Um, but when you get above $10,000, that's kind of a stretch for the trust fund. I'm not saying I, I have seen plenty of grants paid in the excess of ten thousand dollars, but uh, great, great. If you are, if you apply for a trust fund grant and you are denied, you can always appeal to the trust fund board itself, or you can make a personal appearance at the trust fund board, and they meet once a month throughout various locations in southeastern Michigan. Um, yes, I, I think I would be interested in uh, knowing when they meet, um, where they meet. Uh, can I get that information from you by emailing you as well? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. Thank you so much for all of the valuable information. We like to have um, different guests uh, that can provide information so that we can share it in our district. So this was very valuable to us. Uh, any other commissioners have questions for Mr. Price? Um, any Madam other Chair? Go Madam right Chair? Ahead. Yes. I'm sorry, I was muted. Uh, this is Commissioner Scott. I would like to have his email again, please. Certainly. Mr. Yeah, it's Price, P R I C E, Price R5 at Michigan.gov. Okay, thank you. I Any? appreciate the opportunity to speak to you folks, and I would really appreciate it when you give me the opportunity to, to demonstrate. You know how proficient we are serving veterans. And, uh, so challenge us. We're pretty darn good. 
All right. Well, thank you so much. Again, uh, any other commissioners have any other questions? Madam Chair, he may have said this, but is, is this um, wartime or any veterans? Unfortunately, it's wartime. For the, wartime. Okay. For the, for the Veteran Trust Fund grant, 180 days of, of consecutive service during a period of war. 180 days consecutive. Okay. Thank you. So the County Veteran Trust Fund grant, a county can say, we want, our grant is $50,000 and we want to use $40,000 of that to provide assistance to non-wartime veterans. So, oh, okay. So if you have veterans who are not eligible under the, you know, the uh, trust fund, then contact your county representative. I, Wing County has a trust fund grant, and uh, we are the fiduciaries of it. So if you have veterans who don't qualify, don't meet the eligibility criteria as a wartime veteran, then please contact us, and we will try to avail those same services, measure services to those folks. Okay, well, thank you very much. You're welcome very much. Thank you again, uh, Mr. Price, for providing this valuable information that we can now share with the veterans in our districts. Now we'll move on to our next uh, agenda item. Madam Clerk. Item two. A division update from Kwesi Besserai, Director of the Division of Veteran Services, including the impact of COVID-19 on division operations. Good afternoon, Mr. Besserai. Is he All unmuted? Right. Okay. I'm unmuted now. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can. Go Good right afternoon. ahead. Good afternoon. So I'll tell you, we, uh, of course, we're still open for business. We're working remote. Um, we have essentially two social service specialists to take phone calls and process the claims. We are in the process of onboarding a new displaced uh, social service specialist. One person is going to be bumped, as the phrase goes, to another location. So we have to uh, train one <clears throat> new social service specialist over the next few weeks to make sure she gets up to, up to speed to uh, serve our, our veterans. We recently acquired a uh, veteran's part-time temporary outreach coordinator, right? And the purpose of bringing this uh, fellow on, he's an Army veteran, and bringing him on is to uh, kind of augment the activities that I, that I get requests for. So I'll, the priority of work for him is to, and we sat down yesterday and we set out on the Wayne County map and we targeted areas on the out counties that we should visit, that we should contact, either telephonically or through the mail or in person to ask how can we help them? How can we bring visibility about our services to their communities? So we're in the process of uh, identifying some of those communities. Off the top of my head, we talked about going to um, um, all, all the downriver communities, particularly Southgate, um, Westland, Dearborn, uh, because as I go through processing the claims, I don't have a lot of um, veterans in that community request uh, grants from us. So we want to target some of those areas that have not um, received funding from us in the past. Um, so he will work approximately 29 hours per week, right? Because he's part-time. So we have to really partition his, his efforts to target those areas that uh, we can make a, a large impact in. Um, so that's what we've done for that for as far as our staffing is concerned. How has COVID-19 impacted us? Of course, being remote is one thing. I have not seen a large uptick in the rent or rent evictions, which is what I expect to happen probably mid-August in Metro Detroit. I believe the governor uh, allows some evictions to take place mid-July. We have not seen an increase and claims for assistance in that area thus far. But we do anticipate it happening within the next, within the next two to three weeks that we should see an uptick in uh, requests from assistance in that area. Uh, we did receive the County Veteran Service uh, Fund and um, that grant, and that is paying for the part-time salary, the salaries of the part-time outreach coordinator as well. Uh, we have it focused on, can you, okay, my, my computer went out for a second. We, we are focused on peacetime veterans. 
uh, with the County Veterans Service Fund grant. So in that regard, we have um, roughly a half a million dollars as I pushed out to you guys in emails and that we're trying to push out to the community. We have been pushing out the food vouchers. We have not had a lot of success with that, a lot of requests for the food vouchers. So again, that is why the outreach coordinator is required to help us get the word out there about the availability of those uh, Meyer food vouchers. Okay, um, I'll pause there. Any, are there any questions? Oh, I can't hear you. Oh, we had commissioners. We had talked about, we had talked about um, providing a flyer for the vouchers for um, the peacetime veterans all of the resources we have available to them so that we can get it out in our districts. You mm -hmm. sent us a flyer, but it was, it, it didn't talk to the services that uh, like the Myers card and uh, that it's available to wartime veterans. Is there a way we can get something like that? We can we can re, we, yeah we can do another flyer if you guys think that's that will help uh, specifically for the food vouchers that's not a problem at all for the food voucher as well as any other um, resources um, Mr. Price just talked about helping with a roof um, or car repairs uh, does that also the the those monies also can they also be used for for those services so the way we've structured the county veteran service fund grant is that it mirrors our uh, soldiers and sailor relief uh, fund so the short answer is yes we can use the county veteran service fund grant just like we use the soldier sailor relief fund so Although one is for peacetime and the other is for wartime, we can use those monies for, for um, car repairs, some roof repairs and things of that like, of that sort. Okay, and so what, what I'm asking, and I think that would be very helpful is that we outline some of those things because I didn't know myself that we had funds that could be used to help with a roof or a car. Um, and so I think it would be helpful for veterans in our districts to have that information. I'm quite sure that you would probably get more calls if they knew that they those funds could be used for that. Yes, so, ma'am, we can do that. We can do yeah. that. It doesn't so take long for us to create another flyer that will annotate uh, specifically which services um, and then the qualifications to get it. So we can do that. Great, great. And then uh, also there was another question. So for the outreach coordinator, uh, we last, uh, last year appropriated uh, $100,000 for a full-time outreach um person so this person you just said is is part-time and so i'm just trying to understand what happened to the full-time person and the full-time person was supposed to be located in a in a physical place although be it covid I, we we understand that but he was supposed to be he or she was supposed to be out county. Can you talk to that? So as I understand, there's some budget challenges right now with uh, actually funding that role. So that's been, that outreach coordinator role, that's been put on pause. And so the ideal for that role would be for he or she to set up a schedule to go out county and sit up, set up an office out there, say for example, at Southgate. I know there were some conversations about Westland um, but I can tell you for this role, that is, that is not the plan to have that person sit in an office all day because uh, none of our, none of our uh, social service specialists are seeing anyone in person. So 
what I like to do is get smarter on how do we do that? How do we set up a remote office that's safe, um, say whatever municipality, what are their hours? Because what I'm finding, most veteran service organizations and a lot of municipalities uh, aren't seeing people in person. So that's why we found that the remote capabilities are the most effective because you can send, you can start it with a phone call, you can end it with a phone call, but you can also send documents in and that seems to be working for us right now. But as it stands right now, I don't know if that's the, the, the best idea to have somebody sit in an office uh, because everybody's really sensitive to coming to, to uh, coming out uh, in public right now. But we'd like to get smart on how do we do that? Uh, right. that that's, the, that's the biggest thing. How do I protect my staff and protect the public as we, as we sit there and wait for people to show up? So that may be maybe in an ideal state, we'd say we're going to, we're going to uh, maybe set appointments or something like that. But I have not had a, a, a through veteran service organizations. They're not open either. And they're not getting a lot of traffic uh, with people asking for assistance in their area. So I don't, I'm not saying that I'm going to mirror everything that veteran service organizations do, but I like to figure out how do we get out there and help veterans. And we're trying to explore that right now in this, this uh, climate. Okay, so the 29 hours per, per week, um, the, the outreach coordinator mm -hmm. that you just recently hired is going to basically do everything rem remotely or no. by phone? No, no. He will go out, so he will, make a con he will make initial contact with the veteran service organizations in those various communities and the um, municipalities if there's a point of contact that we can talk to and make sure we push our information out there and he'll drive out there and hand out certain brochures, certain information. And uh, so that's part of what he'll do. And so it's kind of on order. What, what do they need from us? Do they need somebody to come talk uh, to a veteran? Then we can possibly do that. But his role will be a little bit different than the social service specialists that are already stationed in house and work the most. Okay. But and he will so not sit in the office and just uh, mail it in. He will actually get out where it's safe to go out uh, with the proper P PPE to address some veteran concerns, just like I do right now. Okay. So for example, this weekend, he'll be, there's a food drive. He'll be out there distributing flyers for this food drive this weekend and all following weekends. So his hours aren't focused just on the Monday through Friday. It's to go um, after hours and on weekends, make sure we push the information out there about veteran services. And that includes the Soldier Sailor Relief Act and the County Veteran Service Fund Grant. Okay. I All right. Question. I will. Yes, uh, Mr. Uh, Commissioner hey, Hatter. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, it, it seemed to me in all veteran organization, uh, we have a difficulty in communicating with the veteran because we try to uh, put the burden on them to communicate with us. Mm -hmm. Is there any possibility to get the list of all the veterans in Wayne County in the area and start the person you're going to hire to communicate with them, start to target them one by one? The first round is going to be a little bit long and excessive, but as a through, go and through it, you start to do elimination people who's working, not qualify for assistance, eliminate those. And like that, you have a list of targeted veterans who are really in the need and don't know how to communicate with us or don't have the ability to communicate with us. Is there any possible way to start to well, reach out to them? What, what I would say, Commissioner, is that there's 79 to 83,000 veterans in Wayne County based on the last census. So I don't think that's realistic to, for one person to sit and talk to them all, but what I think is realistic is to get a targeted mailing, <clears throat> excuse me, which is what we're planning on doing, get a targeted mailing to veterans in, uh, in certain zip codes. Um, we, we're working with a company right now to send those mailings out and that way we can reach them and should they need some help, then they can reach back out to us. But for one person to sit there and call, you know, roughly 75,000 veterans, that's a heck of a task um, and 29 hours a week would not get it done uh, fast mm -hmm. enough. So we're figuring out other ways to, to, to reach those veterans. And so yeah, we're trying we to use tentacles of the veteran service organizations and some municipalities to spread the word. 
but with a, with a, with two people covering 43 communities, uh, it's it, that's a heck of a task to make that right. hard work like that. That would be hard to do. Mailing mailing target would be good. Would be the next choice, I would say, at yes, least sir. to address to every one of them, and if they communicate with us, yes, then sir. you have the ability to do that. Uh, Thank I you. feel confident. I feel confident about that method um, because it is hard now because we're not we're not getting requests to speak as often as I used to. Uh, again, because a lot of these entities are doing everything via Zoom, and so again, there's a digital divide between our veterans. Not all of them are tech savvy, so you've got some in a uh, uh, 55 to 73 year old gap that a demographic rather, and they're not tech savvy. So as a result. Would it be all right if I commented on uh, what Quasi's? Uh, so, as as a state agency, we have access to a plethora of lists of veterans. Um, however, we cannot share that information, and I haven't found an entity out there that can share, you know, contact information like telephone numbers, addresses, um, because of the confidentiality requirements that are imposed on us. Um, so unless a veteran were to come to us and say, I am okay with you releasing my contact information to Wayne County or, or another entity, we just can't do it. We would like to, I mean, we send out thousands of generic letters to veterans um, every quarter and uh, just don't have a whole lot of success there. A lot of the contact information is inaccurate and we never get any responses and um, so, Thank you. Thank you. It is, it is, it is hard. I mean, you know, I, I hear a lot of people say the veterans need help and I'll tell you, I'm on the front lines with it. And a lot of times I was just on the radio talking about this. We will ask the veteran once they call, demonstrate your need. And whenever you give them a homework assignment about <coughs> submitting, <laughs> excuse me, their documents, that's when the trail goes cold. So we do our darndest to give veterans some assistance there. As they said, there isn't a, a plethora of, of, of services out there. Uh, but a lot of times the veterans need assistance and they need, they need assistance from, from beginning to the end. And you got to have a caregiver or somebody like that, or somebody who has power of attorney to follow up with everything. That means go through all their bank statements to get them that assistance. So we do our darndest in our office to facilitate and make it simple, uh, which documents we need so we can process their claims. But I just wanted to throw that out there. You didn't ask me that, but that's usually what happens. And it is a, a moving target. They're not just sitting there. And again, at 79 to 83,000 veterans, not all of us need help, right? So we're trying to get that information out to those veterans who could potentially need some help and we could potentially help. Thank you, Mr. Betzerai. Any other commissioners have questions? Any other commissioners? Um, and you just mentioned, uh, the, the process of applying, uh, what does that look like anyway? So what it looks like is one, they have to call their office 313-224-5045 and they say, I Can need Can you help. say that one more time slowly? Sure, 313-224-5045. And so they'll start that conversation. Hey, you, this is me. I'm a veteran. I served during this period. I need some help with my rent. And we'll say, okay, are you honorably discharged veteran? We walk them through all the qualifications and they'll say, okay, great. Then we'll say, we need a copy of your DD-214. I'm sorry, hopefully I don't fade all my, my batteries dying on me. But we'll need a copy of my DD-2, your DD-214. We'll need bank statements to show that you can demonstrate a financial need. And we, we make sure that's clear because we have veterans call us who have $30,000 in the bank and they can pay for their own bills or they have $80,000 in their bank and they can pay for their own bills. These are set up for veterans who have a financial need. And I say somebody with $80,000, they asked me earlier this year, can I fix their roof for $2,000? Well, sir, you, you have the means. So you have to demonstrate a financial need for our services. Um, so then we just walk them through. This is what we, what we need from you. And so at that so, point, we take the bills and we pay directly to the, to the, um, to the creditor. So the required documents of, of, uh, of a need or showing that you have a need is the bank statement or is there other required documents? We're going to need all the bills. All the bills have to match in that, in that veterans, that household. So they can't, 
All the, all the documents must match that address that they're requesting some assistance from. So there'll be bills that we require with pay stubs, and it's not a it's not a lengthy process because those are things that you should have. And then we go ahead and start processing the claim. It could take roughly 10 days to process it if they turn everything in on time and then we'll start cutting a check. So it's not a lengthy process. Only way it becomes lengthy if they don't re, uh, turn in those documents. Great. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you for much um, for, for all that you do. Um, I know that you're working hard to service our veterans and we really appreciate what you do. Thank you so um, much. Is there, again, any other questions from other commissioners? All right, uh, Madam Clerk, we'll move to the next item. Item three, a department update on the April Director of the Department of Senior Services, including the impact of COVID-19 on department operations and a preview of the August 13th education webinar on seniors living at home during COVID-19. <clears throat> Welcome, uh, Ms. Whitmore Davis. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, and to all the commissioners on the line and to the community. Uh, it's Good always afternoon. a pleasure. Always a pleasure to come before you to share um, regarding uh, the, the Department of Senior Services. Uh, just to follow your uh, outline, I'll share the impacts that we continue to work through regarding COVID-19 and uh, implementing our Wayne County Meals on Wheels program. We continue to serve once a week. And we also are, um, we have a congregate meal drive up program that started back in April. It continues uh, to work very well where those who used to participate in the in face-to-face -face congregate meal program that we can no longer do due to COVID-19, they can come through and pick up their, their weekly meal allotments and then um, go and back to their safety of their home. Uh, working with our volunteers, I just wanted to share that we just recently sent out a sur volunteer survey to over 840 of our Wayne County volunteers who help us to distribute the meals. And as of today, we've received about 250 uh, returned vol volunteer surveys and really receiving some good information uh, finding how our volunteers are very still committed to the work in spite of uh, working through COVID. I especially wanted to make sure that they felt safe, that they had the adequate PPE that we've been providing to ensure that no one was falling through the cracks. Um, when you have a volunteer corps of that many people, things can happen and we really wanted to make sure that everyone felt safe and had the uh, sufficient supplies to help them to continue to be safe. Uh, just so you are aware, we reported to ASA, which is the state of Michigan, uh, for the week of uh, July 27th, ending the week of July 27th, we had uh, 960 congregate meals served and 12,431 home delivered meals served during the week of July 27th. So that's to give you a bird's eye view of our reach during that week alone. Now um, you've asked me to share about our continuing senior education program, which we're calling our CSE virtual programs and these interactive series was designed to break down information isolation that many seniors and older adults are currently experiencing and we want to also provide important information in the safety of their homes and also they can still connect with their Wayne County government and resources that we have right in the safety of their home whether they participate through the computer on Zoom or on phone, because we want to make sure that no one is excluded from participating. Um, this, and what really excites me about this program, this al pro allows Wayne County Senior Services to provide a social connection uh, to information to empower our older adults, but also touch older adults who uh, reside in Wayne County and do not participate in our Meals on Wheels program. So that way they can participate whether they are a 
a, a meal participant or not. And we want to make sure that everyone is included, that during this uh, extreme uh, environment of isolation, that no one is excluded. Uh, as you know, on June 25th, we had our first uh, series that was around uh, COVID-19 scams and fraud uh, presentation in collaboration with Wayne State University Institute on Gerontology and also a wonderful mini presentation by Mr. Betzerai from our Wayne County Veterans Services. Segment two on the 13th of August and you see the flyer on the screen. Thank you so much uh, for sharing that. This presentation was developed in collaboration with our department and Dr. Jennifer Floyd and Sergio De Niro and their team. They will present an interactive presentation on COVID-19 safety for senior safety at home. So many older adults have expressed to us at Senior Services their fear, as well as we just, those of us who are out in the community can feel the, the, the fear that a lot of older adults express personally, as well as just the need for credible knowledge. And at Wayne County, we have outstanding experts in our health department, and they'll be able to provide it inside this safe space and have ample opportunity for older adults to ask questions where they may not normally be able to ask a question if they're watching a town hall on their television or hearing from another entity. But in, inside of our senior services program, we wanna make sure that if there's a question that they would like to ask, that it can be addressed. And in September, we will uh, have uh, the next part of our series, we'll recognize Grandparents Day. Uh, many of you may know that the second Sunday in September is National Grandparents Day. That holiday was created during President J Jimmy Carter's administration. And we are excited that this year we will, we had hoped to do some face-to-face -face celebrations around the county, but uh, uh, COVID-19 made other plans. So we're going to have a virtual celebration around Grandparents Day at our next series, which was held in uh, early September. September, probably after Labor Day. And I wanted to also share that any information that we receive from Mr. Baxter or Ms. Ramsey regarding any upcoming events, we share them as well during the session. Uh, because there's a, we have a, a captive audience, we've created a new uh, element to this uh, virtual presentation and I call it Fast Facts. That way, if we have uh, partners who have short presentations that can be prepared and provided in five minutes or less, we put a couple, not too many. The main presentation, of course, will be the safety presentation from our colleagues at the health department. But during that fast facts time, uh, we'll have uh, Mr. Betzerai to come again and uh, giving him every opportunity, my colleague, to share the important Veterans Administration information. Ms. Ramsey connected us with DAAA. They will also provide a, a brief presentation during this Fast Facts. And um, uh, Chairwoman, you know I like to have a little fun, so we're going to incorporate just a little fun inside of this next session so that we can continue to connect and engage and provide an opportunity for older adults to feel connected in during this very disconnected time. But uh, I am um, open for any questions and thank you as always for the opportunity to come before you. Well, thank you for all that you do. Um, any commissioners have questions? Any commissioners have any questions? All right, no questions. We will move on to our next agenda, uh, agenda item. E, such other matters as may be properly submitted before the committee. There are no other items that has been submitted. Next item. Public comments. Anyone has any Comments? Anyone on the line have any comments? Is everyone unmuted? 
Let me make sure one second. Do you want me to unmute everybody? Yes, please. Okay, everybody's unmuted now. Okay, and we don't have any comments in the chat? No. Okay. Does anyone have any public comments? Okay. We will move to the next item. Adjournment. So move. So move. <laughs> Support. It's been moved and supported. All right, everyone. Uh, again, thank you so much for attending the meeting, and we will see you next time. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye.